Hi there, everyone, and welcome to the inaugural episode of An Engineer's Guide to Hell Let Loose. This video is going to run a bit longer than the others. What follows in the series is I'll go through several strong points or hard caps on, on various maps and talk about how to approach them as a construction-oriented engineer. But what I want to do in this inaugural episode is get through a lot of the housekeeping and the basics of the role. Engineer is one of those roles that I just love to play. It's something that a lot of people don't want to do it, and, and they might never do it. There's probably not a lot of competition for it within your squad. There might be. Uh, but it is one of those roles that is important. It has the possibility of being probably the most resource or one of the most resource efficient roles that your, your, your team can field. And so it is one that, that generally will, will help out your team. But the most basic thing for the construction oriented engineer to keep in mind uh, is the cost of their constructibles. So barbed wire is your bread and butter. It is, I, I think, the most efficient for its cost. You can build four what I'll call strands of barbed wire. They cost only 10 resources each. They're very good at denying infantry movement in a particular area. When you team them up with tank obstacles or anti-personnel mines or create choke points and communicate that to MGs, they're, they're very, very effective. Uh, after the barbed wire, these are in no particular order. Uh, barricades, sometimes they, they just look like walls. These are... Uh, these come in uh, different levels. You have to start with the first level. You can choose to build up to the second or the, the final. But your basic barricade is going to cost 25 resources. If you want to upgrade that from level 1 to level 2, it costs an additional 50 resources. And if you want to build it up to its third and final level, it costs an additional 75. So that full level 3 barricade or wall, whatever you want to call it, it costs 150 resources total to get tank obstacles you can construct two of them if you're the americans or the british right now you have the hedgehog which kind of looks like a 3d x if you are the germans you get the i think superior belgian gate uh, but you get two of those at, at 25 resources a pop you can build a tank repair station which costs 50 resources this is an incredibly efficient construction to make if you help a medium or a heavy stay alive or even stay alive and win its fight against another team's medium or heavy for the cost of basically a free supply drop from the support player that's a huge swing in the fuel so that's something to to keep in mind and then your bunkers like your barricades are upgradable to three different levels the basic bunker costs 75 resources it's kind of got three three-sided wall there it costs an additional 125 to take it to level two and then a 150 additional supplies to take it up to its its last level so the total cost of a fully upgraded bunker is 350 supply all right so we've talked about how much your constructibles cost what are the possible sources of those supply really it ought to be supply trucks particularly when you get up to the constructions of upgrading bunkers and barricades, you can get by with the support player's 50 supply supply drop. If you don't have a support player, then you might escape, redeploy, come in as it, drop the supplies where you're going to construct your barbed wire, then escape, redeploy, and, and come back. Don't ask the commander for a supply drop. Yeah, it's 50 munitions for 100 supply, and 100 supply can certainly get you some of the ways but it's not going to be nearly enough if you're building your barricades and your bunkers up to their level three. And it does cost 50 munitions. And those are better suited to building red zone garrisons or emergency uh, defense garrisons. <clears throat> Spawn's got to come first before you're, you're constructing other stuff. Uh, so the supply truck is the, the best way to do it. It's refillable. It's 300 supplies. Every time you refill it, you have two 150 supply boxes that it can drop. And so uh, that's where your supplies ought to be coming from. As the engineer, you have to be expecting the worst. You can hope for the best, but expecting the worst when it comes to communication is you don't have a commander 
or the commander doesn't really respond to you, the squad lead isn't giving much direction, isn't talking that much to the team, or just has everyone attacking, you're probably in the, the wrong squad. It might not even be worth playing engineer that, that round. Other times you'll get in a squad where the communication is better. You'll be on teams where the communication is better. It will enable you to help your squad and your team so much more if they do communicate, and they will be able to provide you things that you might need to enable your, your team's defense to succeed. When it comes to communication, put in chat or ask through your squad lead if the commander can get you a supply truck. Don't take the initial supply truck that your team spawns with. The commander or a knowledgeable squad lead should be taking that to build some of your team's initial garrisons. Uh, if they ditch it after that, all right, fine, go ahead and, and, and take it. But the supply truck spawns really early. It's not that much fuel, particularly early on when your team can't even get its heavy tanks yet. Uh, so I, I, I would ask early, and it is important, we'll come back to this point near the end, that you try to get constructing as soon as possible. All right, so beyond communication with the commander, squad lead, you want to find out if they need the support player's supplies for a spawn, a garrison. If so, that's not going to be an avenue that's open to you. If there is a designated support person, you can ask them for their first supply drop, probably to get your barbed wire up. It builds quickly. And for the investment of supplies, which just respawns over time with your support player, it, it's great at denying easy avenues of attack to, to enemy infantry. Although it does work both ways. If you're going to deny enemy infantry the, the movement through that barbed wire, it also denies your friendly infantry the movement through that, that barbed wire. I think there's also some profitable communication to be had between you, the engineer, and your team's AT player, particularly if they're good and if they've leveled up enough that they have the ambusher loadout, so they have all those AT mines, you might want to coordinate where you're thinking of building tank obstacles, where you think the problems might be, and where you're going to lay your anti-tank mines. When it comes to laying mines, unless they are laid very close to where the enemy is about to be operating, I would worry about those last Get your constructibles up first because those are the most difficult to do when you're under fire and coordinate with the AT player. That way, if you're on a defending squad and the hope, hopefully there's another squad that's also been designated defense and they have a pretty with it engineer, you might want to talk about what you're thinking and what side you're going to build up versus what they're going to do. And this is going to be one of those places, probably the only person I would recommend should help you construct your fortifications would be one of your team's other engineers. There are folks who sometimes in your squad will offer to build stuff. I would recommend, unless the squad leader says otherwise, that you be the only one constructing the stuff you build. Good defenders are aggressive. They understand that Hell Let Loose is a game of hide-and-go-seek with spawns that's masquerading as a first-person shooter with some side games with, with armor and commander abilities and so on. Uh, but you really want as many friendlies out being aggressive, not passive defenders, hunting down those enemy spawns and keeping enemy infantry off of you. You don't really need them to hammer out your, your blueprints or more like green prints all that much more uh, quickly. The final serious point I'll, I'll put out there is communication with friendly armor and, and what you can do to help them. Tank repair stations are, are great, uh, particularly if you spawn forward. Say you guys won the battle of the mid-cap and you're fortifying the point behind the center cap. If you spawn up there and there's 50 supplies and you put down an armor station that's easily accessible to armor, then you can go ahead and then redeploy back to where you were and, and focus on the, the defense of that point. And, of course, you have the blowtorch. You are a mobile armor vehicle repair station you shouldn't forget that the the last point is i mean it's serious and it's possible but it's it's going to be hard to pull off you can on certain strong points coordinate with artillery you might need the squad leads help to to, to mark it but if you've created say choke points in a wheat field for infantry and you know the attack is coming through the wheat field you communicate to arty where the choke points are 
and all they have to do is just drop HE on, on those choke points, and you've shut down that path of ingress to your hard cap. This is going to be the second to last section in this video, and here I'll talk about general principles of hell let loose fortification construction. They are general principles, and so I know I do contradict them in some of the videos that, that follow. Uh, but that's when I get to the specifics of various strong points. And so, yeah, sometimes the general principles have to be violated because of the specifics of a, of a situation. But generally, my view of this role is to take away the easiest attack paths available to the enemy. You do this by first knowing or identifying what those enemy ingress paths to your hard cap are and then taking appropriate measures to counter them. For example, on a lot of the French maps, there are hedges abounding. And so what I do in those situations, it looks weird to do. And it's not something, I don't know that I've ever seen another engineer do this, but I like to build strands of barbed wire, sometimes supplemented with a tank trap or anti-personnel mines at right angles to those hedges so that an enemy who wants to traverse that way, they can still move, but they have to leave the cover and concealment of the hedge in order to do it to run around the, the barbed wire. Or sometimes I'll leave a little gap and there will be an AP mine somewhere nearby and you'll hear it and you'll notice on the map that it's gone and you can then just reset that, that AP mine. Tank traps are, uh, I guess they're correctly named in this game, but I find that more often than not, they don't do very much tank trapping. Armor is able to find other, other ways around it. But they can be useful to pair with barbed wire and with AP mines. You can occasionally get something of choke points, usually along bridges, uh, that you might actually be able to use tank traps to deny enemy armor in Avenue in some of the more urban environments. You can pair the tank traps with anti-vehicle mines. That's always fun. But I primarily view tank traps as just an additional way to prevent enemy infantry movement. And finally, where there isn't already natural cover for defenders to shoot into enemy ingress paths, that's where constructions, barricades, bunkers really come into play. And the role they should be playing is enabling your team to, to knock down those enemy ingress paths that you weren't able to cover or were just not well covered by the other tools that are available to you. I strongly urge you to resist the temptation to over fortify the hard cap itself. I know I will violate that in videos to follow because there are situations where it makes sense to build onto the, the hard cap, but those hard caps become magnets for all sorts of nastiness, bombing runs, HE, artillery, smoke, frags, people using AT guns to shoot at infantry in the hard cap, all that stuff. And so if you're building a lot in the hard cap, you're incentivizing your friendlies to go to the constructions you've built, but it makes them bait for all those other types of deaths and inconveniences. So that's whatever. That's, that's my view of fortifying uh, hard caps. Final general principle, it's something I, I urge you to make peace with early on, or you're going to be very disappointed in the role. You're going to be more useful against enemy infantry than you are against enemy armor. You do play a role in beating enemy armor, again, through occasional tank traps, through anti-tank mines, and through keeping your friendly armor alive with that handy-dandy blowtorch you have in your basic engineer loadout. But there are other people on the team who are better suited to dealing with the armor situation. Squad leads to identify and mark them. AT players, satchels abound in this game. If you've gotten all your constructions up and you have the satchel loadout for engineer, go to town, particularly on those heavy tanks. Uh, but you could have up to three satchels in a, a given squad. The commander has the precision strike ability, lots of rolls including artillery, can drop smoke, and that will complicate what, what armor can see and, and do. So 
you are anti-infantry oriented with a supporting role to play in the anti-armor game. All right, so finally I'm at the last section of this, and it's just other things to, to remember about the role. The first is the time issue. On a map where the two sides are pretty even when it comes to skill, you don't have that much time to get your constructions up. That's one of the reasons why I, I recommend you try to get mines down last because you can just do it later on. Uh, you don't have to bring a supply truck in. People don't have to hear you hammering away. But I've been looking at this a lot in the build-up to launching this series, and it seems like about 10, eh, sometimes you get lucky, 15 minutes in, and enemy recon or attacking squads are on you, and I have found when they get on you, they, for whatever reason, they really don't want to let you, the construction-oriented engineer, go. I think they think you can do far more than you actually can, and that can be really useful if you're diverting, say, a, a recon squad or an attacking squad to, to you. All right, fine, but you're not going to be able to get those constructions up. Related to that, when you get the supply truck, if your team doesn't have all nine nodes up, you need to get down up to the three you can get. If you have to build all three, that means you have 150 supply left, and most likely you only have 150 supply left because you had to use some of those supplies for the construction of one or two other, other nodes. I'd recommend you drive up, drop the supplies where you're going to do some constructing, refill the supply truck, bring it back. You now have 450 supply to play with. It's not everything you could use, but it will be a lot to get you started. The engineer role is so much easier to do when you have experienced squad mates and or you play with another group of, of friends or just other people you play with on, on a regular basis. When that's the case, if you want to create a squad, that's certainly one way to integrate the construction-oriented engineer. If you have a few others who might be interested in the engineer role, you might want to think about getting in Discord with them then joining different squads on the same team and working with each other to build up the, the defenses for a hard cap in a particular game. Additionally, though unrelated to that point, fortifications that you build, or barricades, bunkers, that you lose become assets to the other side. And it's one of the reasons I recommend against building up the hard cap too much because if the enemy is able to work their way up to your fortifications and you're no longer able to defend them, they're now going to turn those fortifications and the cover and concealment they offer against you. Where there are fields where there's vegetation, those are good places for mines. Anti-vehicle mines in the middle make a lot of sense. Frequently there are hedges that abut the edge of those wheat fields. Remember that those are prime ingress paths for infantry, and so they might be ripe for fortifications or anti-personnel mines. Also remember, level 3 barricades and bunkers can do a lot to obstruct sight lines, and that works both ways. And so one of the other reasons for building out of the hard cap is that building tall with those level 3s can inhibit enemy armor and MGs, from spraying into your, your hard cap. Think about or look around for friendly spawns. Think about what enemy sight lines might be available into your hard cap or the routes from your spawns to your hard cap and whether you need to take action to obstruct those. You want to work with what's already there. And so if there's already natural defenses, natural cover, it's usually unnecessary to supplement those with additional construction. Go with what's already there and then build out where you still need it and you don't have good options as defenders. Almost done here with our list of other things, but remember that destroyed vehicles and repair stations do offer a bit of concealment and cover, although they can be destroyed by additional enemy damage. This is a bit of a weird one, but 
for whatever reason in this game, trucks cannot drive over a level one barricade. If you drive right into a level one barricade, the truck stops or bounces off. Yet, if you have a level one bunker, trucks can at least drive up and over the sides of them. I'm just telling you to be aware of it. Finally, if you've gotten all your mines up, all your constructing done, and you want to, go ahead and switch to another loadout. Or even switch to a different class if if need be. All right, folks, I hope that this has helped. I know that it's gone long. Uh, the other episodes that follow are not this long. Uh, but there was a lot of housekeeping to cover in here. And in the episodes that follow, I'm going to go through selected strong points on Hell Let Loose maps and give some specific and, and some general advice about how you might want to approach that from the engineer 